amazing recipes that makes the most complicated cooking simple. So I'll hand it over to her. Thanks so much for coming out today. And it's so wonderful to be here in Lagos. And I'm very excited to share with you three easy recipes uh, for entertaining. So I'm in, I've got uh, parmesan and poppy seed lollipops. And I've also got a raspberry and pomegranate panna cotta. And lastly, I have a pear tart, pear tart to tan. So how many of you like making cakes and desserts? Everyone's got their hand up. <laughs> Great. Well, let's get started straight away. I'm going to start with the panna cotta. Now, any of you know what a panna cotta is? Ed, you're cooking later, and this question is not open to you. <laughs> Anyone else know what a panna cotta is? Yes, good. So a panna cotta is basically, it's Italian for a cooked cream. And I'm going to make it with a jelly as well, so you get this wonderful two-tone look. I'm going to show you what it ends up like. It ends up like that. So it looks something that you'd get in a fine dining restaurant or something like that, but it's actually really simple to make. Do we get so, to taste it at the end, Lorraine? What's that? Do we get to taste it at the end? You get to taste it at the end, I think. Fantastic. I think you get to taste it at the end. All right, so I'm going to start off using gelatin. Now, gelatin is a setting agent. Um, it's not vegan. It's made of, um, from animal products, but it's a really powerful setting agent used so much in desserts. But you can use agar agar and other things too. So I just need... Can you just... Charity, can you just put a bit of water in there for me, please? Thank you. So if you have to soak the gelatin first in water, and then it goes really soft, and then you add it to what you're making. So I've got my gelatin, then I've got 100 ml of cream here, so I'm going to put that in. 100 ml of cream and milk and some sugar. Pop that in as well. I've got 100 grams of caster sugar here. Have you got the milk? That's cream. Have you got the milk? No, that, you just need one more. There wasn't just 100 ml more in there. Thank you very much. Okay, and what we're going to do is just going to cook this down very gently. So what I'm looking for is for the sugar to dissolve in this cream and in this milk. And you don't want to overheat it just yet. You want to make sure that the sugar has dissolved so you don't get all crystals in your dessert. Now, whilst that's heating through, move that over here. Do you eat pomegranates a lot? Do you eat pomegranates here? <laughs> There's like some British people nodding their heads. <laughs> Anyone else eat pomegranates? Not very much here, right? Well, pomegranate is quite an unusual fruit, but I love them. And they have the seeds like this. I'm sure you've seen them before. And the best way to prepare it, if you get the whole fruit, is to just cut it in half, and then you're presented with that, OK? So sometimes people get their knife in, and they're trying to get the seeds out, and they get into all manner of mess. But what I do is I take my hand like a claw, Take a wooden spoon, and then you just bang it. And then the seeds, and bang it and squeeze it. And then the seeds come out, and most of the flesh stays there. Okay? So I'm only going to use the pomegranate today for decoration. I've got pomegranate juice all ready for me from a carton. Cheated. Right, so we're slowly going to melt down this sugar. Get that going down there. Now, when I'm cooking, I really like to like, take questions from you. So if there's anything in your mind about desserts, baking, or even about me, my career, how I got into cooking, then please do fire away. Right, I'm going to turn the heat up on this. Now okay, I see some people in the front. OK, now the sugar is melted. I want it to come to the boil. When I get it come to the boil, I've got my gelatin yeah, in thank here. You. And if you can see already, it's gone all gooey like that. Now, some people have told me when they read recipes, once they've soaked the gelatin, they think they have to put all of this mixture in to set it. But no, what you're doing is you're just going to take out the gelatin. I'll do that in a minute. And pop it in to the mixture. So we've got the cream and milk here. And 
you just want to make sure, yeah, make sure the sugar's gone. And then you whack it up and let it boil. Let it boil, but don't let it burn. Let it boil and keep stirring so nothing's catching on the bottom. Delicious. Any other questions? Lauren, we have a question in the front. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, I wanted to ask the quantity of the gelatin. The gelatin, the yes. quantity. Like the quantity of the gelatin you added. Because we don't really, this leafy, like the kind of gelatin you use is not so common here. We have powdered yes. gelatin. So I was just asking, like the quantity to the quantity of cream you added for a basic panna cotta recipe. Yeah, so that's a good question. Because often when you're looking for gelatin, you do just get the powdered, powdered variety. Normally it says the difference between, because gelatin's very different as well. Not every gelatin sets the same amount of liquid. So it's just about looking, you, on, it normally says on the pack, because you get gold leaf gelatin and all different strengths. But it will normally say, but yeah, this works very well with the powdered gelatin as well. I've got vanilla, I'm just slicing it down the middle, and then you open it up, and then you get this rich blackness of the seeds inside. See that, it's just gorgeous. So um, I'm gonna put that into the panna cotta, and you get these beautiful flecks of vanilla and I use the back of the knife, it's a very big knife, and I'll pop it in there. Just gives another layer of flavour for the desserts for me, it's all about different layers of flavour. You don't just want sweet, you don't just want sweet, you want all the different flavours. Okay, so there's a vanilla in there, I mix that up. Okay, so now whilst it's still warm, I'm going to take my gelatin and it's very important you get all the gelatin out because it's clear you can leave some of it in there so spend a minute fishing around in the bowl getting it out here's the gelatin and then squeeze out as much as the liquid as you can you want to squeeze out and then add it to your cream and then stir now at this stage, you can sieve this to make sure there's no um, lumps of vanilla left. But can you see that? I left a whole leaf in there. So there's still some left in there. And then you just want to discard that. So to your point about the amount of water, it just doesn't matter because I'm going to get rid of this anyway. As long as it's enough to cover the gelatin. So I pop that in there. And uh, once I'm sure that that's melted, I'm going to use, uh, I've got some yogurt here, and I'm using a yogurt to lighten it up. Because although this is a beautiful dessert, we can also choose to be a little tiny bit healthy as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of yogurt. Pop that in, mix it up. And I added the yogurt after the gelatin, because if I'd added the yogurt when the milk was still hot, it would have cooled it right down and it may not have been hot enough for the gelatin to melt. So I'm mixing that up. I actually have a question, Laureen. Um, can, over here. Can you use any type of yogurt? Or does it have to be Greek yogurt, just plain yogurt, unsweetened yogurt? Uh, you probably want yogurt that's got a bit of body to it. So okay. like a 0% yogurt's probably not great. It will still work. Okay. It will still work. Okay. But definitely a Greek yogurt. I, I think really a Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt? All right. Yeah. Not Greek style. In England, you get Greek style. But proper Greek Whatever yogurt. that means. Okay. Yeah. Right, so I'm just going to give it a little... I don't want it too many bubbles in it. But I'm just going to make sure that I've got no lumps in there. And if you're super pedantic, you can sieve it to get rid of all the lumps. Okay. Now I've got my lovely mixture. And I'm just going to pour that a little bit into a jug. This is good enough to eat like this with a spoon, to be honest with you. And then I'm going to pour it into one of these glasses. You want nice glasses, you can use champagne, flutes, anything like that. So this is not ideal, this muffin tin. <laughs> but I want it at slant. And then I'm just going to pour in the mixture like that. So it just comes to the top, like that. Easy. 
You can use egg cartons or all sorts to wedge it, to keep it nicely wedged. I don't really fancy carrying this, to be honest, but... And there you go, in there like that. So it would be lovely with the pineapple that you've got so much of here to have that yellow and the white contrasted too. So you, you do that and then you pop that into the fridge for a good few hours until it firms up. Okay. Can I give you... You can carry this for me. <laughs> there you go. Yes, please. Okay, so now I'm going to do my jelly. Who likes jelly? You like jelly? No one. One person. Well, this is for you. Okay, so I've got my gelatin. I've got my jelly here, which has also got gelatin, obviously. Pop it into a jug. Then here I should have boiling water. No. Um, here. I've got some boiling water. And I'm going to put about 200 ml in there, roughly. Okay, and just let that dissolve for a minute. Let that dissolve. And then you're going to add the pomegranate juice. Once it's fully dissolved, you don't want to cool it down too quickly, otherwise the jelly won't dissolve. So you mix that all together like this. And the, the beauty of this one, where I love doing it, is because if you are entertaining, having people over, you can do it way in advance. You can do it the day before, leaving you more time to make the other courses and, of course, to spend with your guests. So I'm all for that. So this is what they look like when they're all set. Okay? okay. Thumbs up. <laughs> this is what it looks like when they're all set. So simple. Who struggles with baking or cooking? Does anyone find it really difficult? No? Oh, you're, oh, right, okay. Do you think you'd be able to do this? The people that... Yeah, it's easy. See, it looks all fancy, but it's, it's really easy, isn't it? See. Right, so then you put, you've got your jelly. It's already here. Now, once you've pulled these from the fridge, when you, wait, you want to wait until this is um, cold, because if I pour this now onto that, we're going to have sloshy mess. So make sure this is cold, cool it down. You can either put it in some ice or something like that and cool it down. And I always put it in the freezer as long as I've got no other meat there. And then you're just going to pour that into this and then you can leave it upright at this stage because you've already done the slanted bit. So you pour your jelly in there, your pineapple jelly or your raspberry jelly or whatever else you're using, into the fridge again to set overnight and then you're done. So I'm just going to get the finished ones from the fridge. <clears throat> Here. And then you will have, it's going to take too long for us to stand around, wait, sit around waiting for that to set. But then you will have these amazing vanilla, raspberry and pomegranate panna cotta. And then I like to have a bit of a garnish. So you can use your raspberries or your pineapple, whatever you're using, and then just pop some pomegranates on top. And that just gives another flavor layer, and it also gives texture. So I'm getting a nice bit of crunch there. You can put some nuts on top. You could do some grated white chocolate. There's all sorts you could do with this to make it really delicious. <laughs> 